Hello, my name is Keith Langford. I work for Shaker Heights City School District. I am the Family Community Engagement Coordinator, and it is my pleasure and honor to read to you the story of Ella Baker, Lift As You Climb. This story is written by Patricia Ruby Powell, and it is illustrated by R. Gregory Christie. Let me just start by sharing with you that Ella Baker was born in 1903 in Virginia, and she moved to her family's farm in North Carolina in 1911. In 1911, when she lived on the farm with her grandfather, the story reads, under a bright North Carolina sun, Ella rode to church with granddaddy and mama. When granddaddy Mitchell stood to preach, Ella sat in the deacon's chair, legs ruler straight, ears soaking up his strong voice. He preached give to others. He preached join together. He spoke freedom. And he asked a question, what do you hope to accomplish? At the age of 14, Ella set off for boarding school in Raleigh, North Carolina. High school and college at Shaw University, top of her class she was, worked as a waitress to pay her way. After she graduated, Ella moved to New York City. She asked herself, what do I hope to accomplish? She would lift as she climbed. As she traveled the country, she ended up in Florida. She would listen to people. She listened in Florida to a group of educators. Our school principals asked for teachers pay equal to white teachers pay. White dynamited his house, killed him. Ella mourned, then said, you want equal pay for Negroes? Register to vote. Choose your representative. They will listen to your complaints. That representative will fight for the Negro. All over the South, Ella made speeches about freedom, voting, rights. Words straight from her heart to the hearts of her audience. Then she'd ask the question, what do you hope to accomplish? Ella had the opportunity to meet Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He knew exactly what the people wanted, freedom. Martin Luther King Jr. and 100 men, mostly preachers, and Ella worked together for black freedom. They formed the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Churches worked with preachers at the top, handing down knowledge from the pulpit to the flock. That's how these preachers wanted to work now, like their churches did, from the top down. Ella worked from the bottom up, from the grassroots. She wanted people to solve their own problems, like her mother taught her, lifting as she climbed. But the powerful men weren't used to women working in their inner circle. Ella listened to people, then raised their questions with the preachers. Should we harness the power of black women as leaders? Should we train local leaders? Should we create educational programs? Then something amazing happened. Negro students sat at white only lunch counters. They wanted to be served a hamburger alongside white people in the store where they bought their school supplies. 
in different cities, Greensboro, in different states, Nashville, in different cities, Atlanta, Durham. Sit-ins exploded throughout the South. Ellen had never been so excited. She brought the students together at a conference at Shaw University. She wanted them to organize. A united swell of voices was more powerful than individual voices. They asked her for advice. Always the teacher, Ella. She asked them, what do you hope to accomplish? They wanted to register voters. They wanted to stage sit-ins. They named themselves Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, abbreviated SNCC, which some call NIC. Students stage sit-ins. Some got whipped or spat on. They sat quietly, responding with nonviolence. Many were jailed. Ella listened and confronted them. She brought them toothbrushes and soap to their cells. And then she advised them, lift as you climb. Ella worked alongside the students when they rode in battered school buses and commercial buses, testing the new integration laws by breaking old Jim Crow laws. They sat in whites only seats. They came south to help desegregate. In Alabama, the buses were firebombed. Students were beaten and jailed those freedom riders of 1961, they woke up the nation. Ella had helped plan the rides. She advised the students in meetings, on car trips, over ice cream sundaes, at night sleepovers. As the students brainstormed and connected and they struggled to become their own leaders, many of them women. When it was new to be a woman leader, Ella said, we are not fighting for the freedom of the Negro alone, but for the freedom of the human spirit. To her, to her last days, Ella fought for freedom, lifting as she climbed. The seeds she, sh she sh uh, showed all her life continue to bear fruit today. She said the struggles for rights didn't start yesterday and has to continue until it is won. What do you hope to accomplish? <laughs>